Hi again, everyone. I'm Ollie Matthews. This is the Narcissistic Resistance, and this resistance video is sponsored by contribution from Anonymous. And here's her story. Hi, Ollie. Just donated to your channel. I'd like to remain anonymous. Here's a story for you to use in a video when you just want some content to keep the channel going if you ever have a slow period. <clears throat> this happened a few months before I went no contact with my narc mother. At the time, I just took it in my stride but it is one example of why she was so exhausting to deal with. Both she and my boyfriend had separately expressed an interest in going to the same art exhibit with me. So we went together and made a reservation at a nice restaurant for afterward. I finished looking around the exhibit first. When I checked in with my mother, she looked worried but shy and told me she was worried about the house. She thought she had left the computer plugged in, and what if it overheats, starts a spark, etc. That is ridiculous. <laughs> That's ridiculous. There's, uh... Now, I don't think that's a reasonable thing to worry about. It's not. But I learned that worry in general is an irrational thing and that for most people is sued by someone taking it seriously. I offered to go back and check unplug. She accepted. That is ridiculous. That is ridiculous because she's just trying to get you out of there for some reason. She actually lets you leave an art exhibit to go unplug her computer? What? What? Wait a minute. <clears throat> you should have asked her. Um, do these companies, every business you know, everybody who has a computer at work, does everybody, does everybody unplug their computers when they go? No? So why do you think that this computer is going to blow up? That every other person leaves plugged in in the world? You can't sue this person because they have another agenda. So you left her and your boyfriend alone at the, at the art exhibit? I think that's kind of what she wanted. I knew I would not be back by the time they both have finished looking. So I said, let me just tell my boyfriend where I'm going and I'll try to be as quick as possible. She insisted I, I not tell him where I was going. What? I interpreted this as possibly being rooted in embarrassment, possibly being an attempt at triangulation. Either way, not worth taking seriously. It would be rude to just disappear. So I let him know where I was going and why and left. Or she was going to try to set you up with him that you always disappear or you're off somewhere. She wanted to set a stage, set a scenario. <clears throat> so she could have one-on-one -on -one time trying to sabotage you. When I returned, I swear she had a face like a slapped ass. She was disconnected about everything. Why did I take so long? She had told me not to tell why I was going. Then at lunch, the waiter was incompetent. The food wasn't so great. After we left the restaurant, my boyfriend planned the route badly. We walked too long. How insensitive is my boyfriend? Don't we know she's old, etc., etc.? You get the idea. She's got game. Somehow, even with only three of us there, she managed to create two quite different experiences for my boyfriend and I. And he doesn't remember it being as tense. <clears throat> she did her bitching about my boyfriend and the length of the walk while she and I were walking slightly apart from him. So that should tell you everything you need to know. That's how your mother operates. Your mother shit talks when the other person's not around. I mean, that's what she does. And much easier for her to set a scene if you've just disappeared. Out of nowhere, nobody can find you. She could pretty much try to gaslight him any way she wants. But once you once you told her where you was going and why, it kind of just makes any kind of shit talking she would do on you look kind of silly since you had to go and unplug her fucking computer. Hence why she's so goddamn angry later on. So she's going to ruin it one way or another. All right, you didn't give me my way. I'm going to burn this motherfucker to the ground. 
it's kind of like uh, it's like a Kim Jong Un. What would happen if if you were gonna lose? Burn it all to the ground, destroy everything. That's what Hitler wanted to do to do to Paris. Paris was supposed to be left in ruins when uh, when it got reclaimed in forty four. That didn't happen. But that's that's kind of your mother's. If I can't have my way, burn it all to the ground. So you're just gonna ruin everybody's day. I'm gonna ruin it for everybody. <clears throat> she then changed again after we got dessert from somewhere. I bought some very expensive pastries, partly out of guilt. She bought a couple other things. We shared them at home with coffee. We chatted about the uh, about the exhibit and looked at the catalog. Although it's not really a chat, since so she doesn't get how to have a discussion where where people have different opinions. Then left. An hour or two later than my boyfriend would have liked. She deme her demeanor had returned to normal, but writing this, I wonder if that wasn't because she could see that he was uncomfortable uncomfortable about the time. I was up I was and I was still picking up the charge emotionally from his discomfort after she had been a cow earlier. What was going on? And was it completely calculated or was it triggered by a genuine, although maybe exaggerated, exaggerated worry about the cable? Thanks, Anna. She was worried about the cable. Once she saw how, 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 how uncomfortable your boyfriend was, okay, and you were giving her guilt pastries, expensive guilt pastries after an art exhibit and after she's like, all right, my job's here's done. Everybody's miserable. Let me leave. That's it. She got all her supply. She sucked it all up. One way or another, the narc's gonna get their supply. <clears throat> so she didn't get her supply by trying to do whatever she was going to do. To, to badmouth you, gaslight your boyfriend about you when, when you were gone, because they love to do that. They love to do that. And the way your mother shit talks your boyfriend when he can't hear, why do you think she's he, she wasn't going to do the same thing to you? She was. And she realized once everybody was properly miserable, her work was done. She's your mother, so she can probably make you miserable anywhere. Anywhere. Because she has that emotional chain on you. For him, his misery probably doesn't start setting in until she invades his space, which is at home, which is why it became so apparent there. All right, so this is where the discomfort comes in with him because he wants his space. And once she realized, all right, now he's thoroughly uncomfortable for two hours. She had all her supply. Everybody's miserable. My job is done. And left. So that's what my opinion, what I think happened, Anonymous. So <clears throat> I hope that helps. Thank you for your contribution and story. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, a narcissist you'd like to expose, you'd like to set up a Skype, email, private phone call, Facebook chat, or you'd like to sponsor a video for someone else who can't afford one, or just sponsor the channel in general, you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. And if you're still unclear, wait for the instructional video link to pop up on the screen at the end of this video to walk you through all of that. Please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been The Narcissistic Resistance. Take care.